Through two years of the pandemic, we have consistently heard that people with severe asthma are more likely to be hospitalized with COVID. Now, we have a paper that shows that people with allergic asthma are actually more protected from COVID because of the allergic immune response and mucosal immunity. This contradiction is not unusual with asthma. Many immune-related studies are often contradictory when it comes to asthma specifically but not with allergic asthma. People who have it seem to be less susceptible to COVID. So what exactly is allergic asthma? How is it different and how does it protect from COVID? Let's see what this new paper says. This study is specific to allergic asthma. So what is it? Asthma is a disease that affects the windpipe and its branches. There are many different types of this disease, of which allergic asthma is one, and it is triggered by an allergy. It could be an allergy to anything. Typically, the allergens are pollen or dander. A majority of people who have asthma tend to have allergic asthma. Typically, asthma is always a problem when it comes to respiratory diseases like the flu. But for some reason, as the pandemic progressed, health experts noticed that those with allergic asthma were not getting infected as much. What separates allergic asthma from regular asthma or many of the other lung disorders is a protein called interleukin-13 or IL-13. Interleukins are cytokines or small proteins that are used for cell signaling. They are immunomodulating agents, meaning that they regulate the immune system. IL-13 is typically involved in fighting parasites like worms. Immune system cells that patrol the body produce IL-13 as soon as they encounter these parasites and worms. This protein then increases the production of mucus which traps these worms. The worms stay trapped in the sticky mucus till other immune system cells come in into the mucus to kill it. All allergies are basically mistakes made by the body's immune system. The body mistakenly thinks that peanuts or pollen are harmful and produces an allergic reaction. But how exactly does IL-13 react to the coronavirus and why does it seem to have a protecting effect? Sure, it naturally definitely traps the virus more in the mucus, but even after the mucus is washed away, viral load still remains low. How is that? This is what the authors of the paper decided to investigate and find out. So to understand why this might happen, the authors decided to compare what happens to infected cells with IL-13 added to them and without. First, the healthy cells. Uninfected cells without the virus appear to look like a kind of mat. This image is a colorized electron micrograph and in this image, the pink color here, these are fiber-like protruding things that are called cilia. They are fine hair-like structures that trap foreign particles and make us scuff them out. They grow from the top of the cells that line our airways and their motion moves mucus and foreign particles around in the airways. The patches of green in this image are some bits of mucus in a healthy airway and the cells that produce mucus are actually called goblet cells. Infected cells were very different. There is mucus everywhere and there are dead cells that can be seen in blue here which the virus had infected. These dead cells are in fact pushed up by the cilial cells and out by the cilia. The virus has infected these cells and the dead cells are now full of viruses. They swell up and they burst and they release more viruses on the cilia onto other cells. What the researchers noticed is that a majority of these cells that were dying were cilial cells that produce cilia. The cells that produce mucus, the goblet cells, were not really getting infected and dying. So they wanted to find out why. Turns out it's because of the ACE2 receptor. This surface protein is present on the surface of cells containing cilia much more than on goblet cells. We all know that the coronavirus uses this receptor along with the TMPRSS2 receptor to enter the human body. All of this is how cells look without exposure to IL-13 so far. 
Now the scientists covered a set of cells with IL-13 first and then exposed them to the coronavirus. They found that all the cilia were healthy and very few virus-filled dead cells were being pushed up. The cells were not dying because of exposure to IL-13 which was protecting it. Turns out it was doing so in multiple ways. The first way is by getting cells to produce mucus that trap viruses even before the virus enters cells. This is a very sticky form of mucus and other cells in our body do this but their mucus reserves get depleted quicker. But those cells that are exposed to IL-13 can keep producing the mucus trapping more and more virus outside of the cells. The team also noticed that the cilia were not moving around as much. The researchers found that IL-13 actually reduces cilia beating. Because the cilia beat less and move less, the mucus moves around less and the mucus has all the trapped viruses in it. But mucus as such is also produced by other forms of respiratory conditions. There was clearly something else that IL-13 was also doing. When the team cleaned away the mucus, the cells were still not getting quite infected. Turns out, interleukin-13's second defense is to cause cells to produce less ACE2 proteins, which the virus typically repurposes to enter our cells. The virus uses a lot of proteins in general, so IL-13 also reduces protein production by limiting ribosome activity. So this could potentially slow down viral replication as well. Lastly, there is something called keratin sulfate or KS, a coating that covers the cilia and was originally discovered protecting our cornea. It is made up of thick sugar molecules that form a physical barrier restricting access to cells. The production of KS had increased for cells lining the airway, preventing the virus from venturing into this thick, dense field of cilia. The team found that IL-13 performs all these defensive functions on cells. So does this mean that everyone with allergic asthma is safe from COVID? Not really. Any respiratory disorder has the potential to have a severe outcome with COVID. So those with any kind of asthma should definitely not be taking the virus lightly. Some, even a majority, might be protected because of their natural reaction, but not everyone is. There are exposure conditions to also bear in mind, and the risk of course worsens if there are pre-existing conditions. What about IL-13 itself? Can it be used as a treatment directly? Not directly. It is an inflammatory protein which means that it leads to inflammation and swelling that constricts airways so there's also things like shortness of breath associated with it. There is excess mucus production and therefore a lot of cough. This can lead to chest pain. And there are numerous other effects that this protein has on our body as well. So while this naturally occurring protein itself cannot be used directly as a therapy or a treatment, Finding out more about its effects on infected cells can give us more insights into developing potential new therapies. Right now, the researchers are still not sure which of these protective mechanisms is playing the biggest role. It could be just one or it could be a couple or it could be a combination of some or most likely a combination of all. We don't know just yet, but these findings are promising and further studies will tell us more.